Hi, welcome to the Snake on Stick Medical Videos. Today we're going to be talking about the mechanism of action of acetazolamide. Alright, so acetazolamide is one of your well-known diuretics. And so what, how does it work actually? What is its mechanism of action? So acetazolamide actually is a carbonic anhydrase inhibitor. And remember, carbonic anhydrase is that ubiquitous enzyme that really helps the conversion of CO2 to HCO3 minus. So how does this actually play into um, physiology when we look at the proximal convoluted tubule? What I'm drawing here are two tubular cells. What I'm drawing here is the lumen of the proximal convoluted tubule, where the urine would be, and actually where filtered HCO3 minus would be. What I'm drawing here is the interstitium, and where all the blood vessels would be. So interstitium and blood vessels. And then this is just the proximal convoluted tubule, specifically the early proximal convoluted tubule. The early proximal convoluted tubule is well known for absorbing a ton of stuff, and it uses sodium as the primary driving force for all this. The sodium is actually powered, the sodium gradient is powered by a uh, sodium potassium ATPase. So the sodium is going to draw in glucose, amino acids, citrate, phosphate, lactate on a co-transporter mechanism using secretary active transport. And this is what the proximal convoluted tubule is super good at, drawing all these organics into the body or reabsorbing them. But what I'm highlighting here in the lower cell is the same type of cell, but a different aspect of it. So you also have an antiporter, the sodium H plus antiporter. And this is really going to help us reabsorb bicarb. So you have the filtered bicarb is actually going to couple with that uh, hydrogen ion that is antiported out of the cell. And what's going to happen is carbonic anhydrase is actually kind of going to convert all that into H2O plus CO2. The CO2 is going to be drawn back into the cell. And then carbonic anhydrase is again going to help convert that CO2 to HCO3. And that CO3 is going to be drawn back into the body here. So basically what you've done is you've taken that filtered HCO3 minus and then you just put it back in the body all bit through a little bit of a complicated system that I've drawn here. So yeah, net movement of HCO3 minus into the body. You're reabsorbing HCO3 minus via this carbonic anhydrase and via this sodium uh, H plus antiporter. What I'm drawing here is just the fact that H plus kind of forms this circle, this loop, and it gets reused and reused and reused because it's kind of holding the bicarb's hand to allow it to get back into the body, and then it goes back and does its job again. So that's what's happening here. And so the H plus and the CA work together in concert to form this cycle that moves bicarb from the lumen back into the interstitium. Cetazole might actually shuts this whole thing down by inhibiting carbonic anhydrase and leading to diuresis of HCO3 minus. So let's go back here. What I say here is actually that this means that HCO3 minus is going to be lost in the body. It's going to be, its concentration is going to increase in the tubular lumen. It's not going to be reabsorbed very well. What's going to actually happen is a diuresis of sodium bicarb. Um, and you're actually going to deplete your total body stores of bicarbonate which is a weak base. So what is this used for clinically? Primary indication is glaucoma because it decreased the pressure of the aqueous humor. A second indication is to um, actually alkalize the urine for different toxins. Um, so yeah, it's going to be actually be good for, I believe, weak acids. And then um, you can also use it for metabolic alkalosis. Remember in alkalosis you have too much base around, so you're getting rid of base with this acetazolamide, which helps. And then you can also use it prophylactically for altitude sickness. This results from the fact that you're going to increase your ventilation, you're going to be blowing off CO2. I kind of think of a CO2 with a gas as just an acid, so if you decrease the acid, you're actually going to have respiratory alkalosis. I know I wrote this wrong, but it's supposed to be respiratory alkalosis. So acetazolamide helps with any alkalotic state. That counteracts, counteracts that respiratory alkalosis. And lastly, it's going to help with something called pseudotumor cerebri, which is idiopathic intracranial hypertension. The tumor is because it kind of acts like a brain tumor. And I'm just going back and highlighting, basically remember all these different clinical uses here. You're losing bicarb, so it helps the different alkalotic states. Okay, so what are some different side effects of acetazolamide? You can kind of guess the first one if you think about it. The first is called hyperchloremic metabolic acidosis. Remember that bicarb is a weak base. If you're getting rid of a weak base, you're going to actually tip the scales in favor of the acid in the body. So you're going to have an acidosis. So you're going to lose that bicarb which is a weak base, and then you're going to have acidosis. Remember that acetazolamide is also a sulfur drug, so you all, always have to consider uh, sulfur allergies. And then there's, you can get this some ammonia, ammonia toxicity, which we'll go over in a little bit. You can get parathesias. And um, what I'm going to draw here is actually how this ammonia toxicity works. And we're going to go back to the proximal convoluted tubule for a second here. 
So I'm drawing the lumen again, the interstitium again. And what is really interesting is that we're going to go back to that sodium hydrogen ion antiporter. And we're going to see how ammonium ion can actually double or substitute for the H+. The transporter kind of sees them the exact same thing. So what happens is, actually, glutamine will come into the body, or into the PCT. It'll break up into ammonia and alpha-ketoglutarate. That ammonia is going to uh, couple with a hydrogen ion and form ammonium ion, which is then going to be put in the lumen of the tubule. Actually, as, the, as you think about it, as the pH of the lumen decreases, you're going to draw NH4 plus into the urine and out of the body. So basically, the pH helps remove ammonium uh, from the body or ammonia from the body. So uh, what happens, though, is actually as the pH of the urine increases with acetazolamide, you're going to draw NH3 back into the body, leading to ammonia toxicity. So basically, how I think about it is you need, you need some hydrogen ions out there in the lumen, and um, that's important for the excretion of the ammonia. So thank you for listening, and I hope you enjoy.